even people like Tyler Perry, billionaire, didn't yeah. do so good in school. Yeah. But could have been placed in yeah. special education. Yeah. And then what I started realizing is, you know, Africans have been colonialized for a long time, but I mean, officially, you know, last 60, 70 years, but you know, they were protectorates of the British crown. Right. And I noticed that even us who have been in North America for 400 years, we have still never been like whites. No. We're still very different from them. Very different. So we sing different than them. Yeah. We dance different than them. Yeah. We preach in the churches different than them. Yeah. You know, yeah. We, 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 we express ourselves in a way, although we have been around these folks from, we are still never been them. Yep. Hi guys, welcome to Kenganda. My name is Janita Maya and this is the Read Pat Podcast. Now, you know, we had to bring back the most... Should I say famous person on King Anda or the most wanted? Yeah, he has some demand. Yes. A lot of demand. Exactly. Mr. Ampora, please yes. introduce yourself. My name is Sheru Ampora, a Pan-Africanist and a businessman here in Kampala, Uganda. Mm -hmm. I'm in technology. That's what I do. That's my business. And it's an honor being here. I appreciate you guys for giving me this opportunity to speak to our people. I really appreciate it. Thank you. O'Shea Duke Jackson, Sacramento, California, African-American. Let's get into it. Okay, O'Shea, take this away. So the last time our brother was here, we were having some conversations, you know, and on the podcast, we do it usually before and after. Mm -hmm. And we started talking about something that I think is very important for the continent and maybe even people in the diaspora is the miseducation of Africa. But it's you, you have a very niche perspective as to what's going on with that. What do you mean by you're saying that Africa is, be, is being miseducated? Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. What I wanted actually to look at was uh, to look at education as in, in its entirety to understand it mm -hmm. from the beginning to where we are. Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily to say that uh, we're being miseducated. So just look at education. So here's what I think. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at education, education is supposed to be learning. Mm -hmm. When I go to school, I'm supposed to learn something that will add value to my life. Mm -hmm. But we have to first look at uh, the the education that existed in Africa or in black communities before we came face to face with Europeans. Okay. So the education that I, I'll, I'll give an example from my people, the Wanyangkore people, mm -hmm. our education was hands-on. Okay. So when the kid was growing up, the kid would do... Uh, the trade of his father. Okay. I come from uh, people who are cattle keepers. Okay. So we have cows and, and our job was taking care of cows. Okay. So there was specialization. So I was born and all I knew was the cow. Okay. How to milk the cow. I knew when the cow was sick. Okay. You know, when the cow was really not happy. I okay. Knew. So everything about the cow, I knew it by the age of uh, 15. So by the age of 15, I think, according to the standards of today, uh, I would have been a PhD holder back then. Okay. Uh, if you if you look at the, uh, the ancient Africans, not actually ancient, the, the pre-colonial Africans, mm -hmm. their education system was hands-on from day one. Mm. So everything was practical. And you would learn on the job. Mm -hmm. I learned milking. I'll give you an example. Uh, from my people, if my father had a thousand cows, mm -hmm. And they were grazing like half a kilometer away. Mm -hmm. And one cow makes sound. I would tell that this cow is A or B or Z. Whoa. Wow. I would tell. And these people were so good that they could even psychologically reprogram these cows. Mm -hmm. So let's say a cow lost its baby. Mm -hmm. So they would get another baby from another cow. Mm -hmm. And they would come and convince this cow that has lost the baby that this is actually its baby. Mm. And they would perform some 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 rituals, and this cow actually would love this baby like its own. What? And so the education back then was was hands on. Okay. But that didn't mean that I had to keep on doing what my uh, my, my my parents were doing. Some mm. kids would, would reach a time and say, "No, for me, 
I want to be uh, uh, to grow food. Mm-hmm. So he would probably go to a neighbor who was growing food to learn how to grow food. Mm-hmm. So what I'm trying to show is the African education back then was hands-on. Mm-hmm. But was it the best? Well, it needed some improvement. Mm-hmm. Now let's look at the education today mm-hmm. that we attended. Uh, I am one of those people who attended uh, schools here in Uganda. Okay. Mm-hmm. And one of the things was uh, we woke up every day morning uh, uh, around six o'clock. Mm-hmm. We go to uh, a school, mm-hmm. which is a, a place of instruction. Right. <clears throat> so when we go to school, we sit in the class from morning till evening. Okay. And the teacher is, is on a, is on on a, on a, on a board, uh, telling us, you know, teaching us in a language we didn't know. Okay. So the language was alien. So you find that you wake up in the morning, from Monday. So Friday, mm-hmm. sitting in a room for 22 years. Wow. And you're not doing anything practical. Wow. So s- at the end of the day, they say that uh, that we are lazy. Uh, first of all, the language, you don't know the language that you're learning. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's, it's not interesting at all. Mm-hmm. So what you're, li- you're learning, you see, <coughs> education is uh, understanding what you're being taught. Mm-hmm. If I bring in, I, I say, Oshe, I want to teach you how to record video footage. Mm-hmm. So I bring a camera and put it there. Mm-hmm. And I show you this is how you record a video, a video footage. But it becomes easier if I teach you in a language you don't know. Mm. If I teach you in Chinese, you can't even understand what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So you will need time to first learn Chinese. So after, <coughs> after one year, after one year, they, they will just put on our papers and say, we are dumb. And they will put failure. Mm-hmm. Mm. So and the kid is a failure because he doesn't know the language. Mm. The kid is actually qualified as dumb because he doesn't know the language. Mm. So this went on and on and on and, and what happened is the people, the middle class and the rich decided that you know what, let's change. This is all over Africa. They say, they said let's change, and the kids will not speak their languages anymore. Now the problem with that, the language is a window to a culture. Mm-hmm. If you don't have a language, you don't have a culture. <coughs> mm-hmm. So the r- rich people said, our kids are going to speak only English. Mm. So these kids grew up and couldn't understand their cultures. Oh, okay. So our education, in a nutshell, the African education that we have, the one uh, that was introduced by uh, the Europeans, mm-hmm. was more of uh, how to imitate white people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and And... Because you see our education here, mm-hmm. the measure of intelligence in all African countries, and I think in diaspora, is how good you speak the white man's language. Yes. Those who were enslaved by the French, mm-hmm. they have to measure them from how good they can speak, uh, speak French. Mm-hmm. Those who were enslaved by uh, the English, the British, they have to be measured at how good you speak English. Yes. And when you make a mistake in English, it's a big problem. Mm-hmm. But if I speak Uganda and I make a mistake, it's normal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a language. But if you go on the streets out there and you ask the people who are moving around, you say, do you think when you speak English, you're intelligent? 99% are going to say yes. Mm. If you ask them and say, is English a language? They'll say no, it's a measure of intelligence. If, if you ask them and you say, is Luganda, uh, if you learn Luganda, would you be intelligent? They'll say no, you wouldn't mm. be intelligent. So the problem was, mm-hmm. is that now we started building a society. Mm-hmm. This is where the problem comes in. Mm-hmm. in the, in the modern capitalistic world we live in, if I go to the market, I am going to tread. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when I'm going to tread, I have to bring something I'm good at. Now, education is supposed to help you to innovate. Yes. So for me, as a person who was from cows, mm-hmm. if I kept on learning them, I would have, you know, innovated my the cow products, milk. Mm-hmm. I knew how to do it better. Mm-hmm. I'd put in some good smell and all the herbs mm-hmm. and what, mm-hmm. and i go to the market and sell them to Joanne. Mm. who is from here because I knew how I kept on him. I have to keep on improving. Mm-hmm. But the problem is now I can't improve it anyway because I'm out of touch with the cows. Mm. So you find that we, when we come to trading, we don't have what they call a competitive advantage. Mm-hmm. That keeps you in poverty. So what happens is a British man comes here with milk, comes here, gets the milk, takes it to the UK, packs it, brings it back to you, sells, sells it at 10 times the price. To you. And you buy it. Yes. Because... For you in your mind, see when you control a man's thinking, 
education is about thinking. Mm-hmm. When you control a man's thinking, mm-hmm. you have controlled him. Mm-hmm. Here back in the day, I think around 90s, in, this, in all of Africa, mm-hmm. people would go to supermarkets and they would specifically buy products from UK mm. or France as business. That's business. Really? This is big. Because now the, past, the manufacturer in the UK is making billions of money. Yeah. Now your money is getting out of the economy. Mm. There's no way you can get rich. Mm. Maybe you, it's, it's like performing magic. There's no way you can do it. <laughs> yeah. so, 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 so this is all our, uh, 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 what are we we're talking about with education. Yes. And the education of the European was more to do with uh, critical thinking. Okay. But critical thinking is a very important aspect. Mm-hmm. The education of the Africa was more about practical, you know, doing it. Yes. And discipline. Because by the time you were growing up, discipline was important. Mm-hmm. They'll make sure that you have discipline. When old people are talking, you don't say anything. Yes. They keep monitoring that. Yes. You're learning every day. Yes. And you're learning from the best. The best teacher is your parent. Yes. Now, the problem with education right now, we have transitioned. We are not Africans anymore. Mm. We are not white. We cannot be white. Right. No, right. we cannot be white. So we are going Come to on, be, yeah. we are going to just be hum- human beings. <laughs> so when we come to trade, look at the Chinese. Yeah. The Chinese, when they got out of colonialism, mm-hmm. they got rid of anything European. Yes. Anything. Talk anything. You see where they are now? Yeah. They are the biggest country right now on the planet. So this is how, because education is supposed to inspire these young people. Yes. So that they can be, you know, patriotic. Mm-hmm. They love their, you know, country. Mm-hmm. But if you have a bad education, mm-hmm. then the people turn again against you. So that, that's that's my uh, wow. my whole, yeah. Again, that's probably one of the best 10 minutes on this podcast that I've heard. Agaba, you might have some competition, but I want to <laughs> say something. As you were saying this, mm-hmm. it took me back to me living in the black community. I want to just say how, like, as you were talking about that, my mind was... You know, sometimes somebody could be telling a story and you're playing it in your mind. Yeah. So it was hard for me to relate to the cows. But as you was telling the story, I can remember me being back in in America and black kids having a problem with English. Yeah. And those who spoke English, we spoke it in the broken language. They call it Ebonics. Yes. Okay. So this black kid who couldn't, you know, speak English good, yeah. they would put him in something called special education. Yes. Have you heard of that before? Yes, I've heard of that. Yeah, and it was said that this this child is mentally retarded. Yes. So you would even get people making fun of yeah. those kids all the yeah. time, you know, yeah. like he's stupid. Yeah. yeah. But that kid is a genius because practically he's smart. Like even people like Tyler Perry, billionaire, didn't yeah. do so good in school. Yeah. But could have been placed in yeah. special education. Yeah. And then what I started realizing is, you know, Africans have been colonialized for a long time, but I mean, officially, you know, last 60, 70 years, but you know, they were protectorates of the British crown. Right. And I noticed that even us who have been in North America for 400 years, we have still never been like whites. No. We're still very different from them. Very different. So we sing different than them. Yeah. We dance different than them. Yeah. We preach in the churches different than them. Yeah. You know, yeah. we, 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 we express ourselves in a way, although we have been around these folks from, we are still never been them. Yep. Yeah. So then it, 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 it turns back. It, it makes me think as you were talking, what was the point of ever trying to be them in the first place when we will never be them or be accepted like them? Yeah. And we've been trying to do things their way for 400 years. Yep. And now Africans trying to do it the last 60, 70, even before then, because right. they were learning English in the 1800s, right. things like that. Right. Right. So at what point? Do you need to find out? And, and, and just like you're saying, we are now human beings because we have yeah. obviously lost our way. Yeah. But the ways we try to identify it is mm-hmm. through what we remember of Africa and our music yeah. and the way that we have church That's right. and the way that we dance and That's the way right. that we do things. That's right. And when you look at China, coming into Entebbe Airport, there's Chinese outside of Entebbe Airport. There you go. And that's not... That's, there you go. There that's you not... Go. That, that writing go. is not for you. There you go. It's for their people. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it's yep. th- their people. They're telling their yep. people. Yep. We are here. Yep. And, you know, when you look at uh, th- these people, I think we were having a conversation about, you know, um, what I was telling you about, what I think, like, how much talent we, we have here right. in Uganda. Right. And, um, you know, the people who respect their cultures the most are doing very well. I was in Dubai recently. 
they still mm. have their traditional wear. Mm. They they don't look probably any different than what they looked like, I don't know, 120 years ago. Mm. Yeah. They're still doing things their way. They're still very strict. Mm -hmm. They have capitalism and they have these opportunities. Not. But they are still them. Yep. And they're still practicing things yep. that they've always had. Yep. Despite, and they do everything for the most part. I mean, obviously people speak English, but yep. the people that own the buildings, they said, hey, these are probably a guy that's an Emirati, that's an Arabic. He can't even speak English. Right. But he owns everything. Yes, he owns everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, when, and, when, and when you think about, you think about that, it's powerful because the whole black world, as you were saying, where they're in French or yep. where they're in Anglophone worlds. Yep. Yep. What benefit have we really gotten? You made a point too the last time we were talking offline. Mm. You're saying like a Japanese kid who learns Japanese is learning it physics yeah. in Japanese. Yeah. It can get a Nobel Peace Prize in Japanese. Yep. But a kid from Arua yeah. or a kid from Buganda yeah. or from your country is yeah. learning in English. Yeah. But what if he was learning it yep. in Luganda? Oh, that would be magic. Yeah. That would be magic. And, and, and it says something. You see, good education inspires people. Mm. Bad education uh, makes people inferior. Mm -hmm. The African education that we have was built to make us subservient to the Anglo-Saxon race. Mm -hmm. That was the whole. If if you if you've seen the story of uh, uh, Malcolm X, yes, when he was in school and the, and the teacher asked the kids and said, "What do you guys want to be?" Well, and everyone was saying, "I want to be an engineer. I want to be a pilot." And he said, "I want to be a lawyer." And the teacher said, "You know what? You can't be a lawyer because uh, you know because you're black. You should be a carpenter. Yeah, you should, you should be a carpenter." And uh, and and that was ho the model was because most of the schools were started by the churches. Yes, so the churches were. Uh, we're building on the foundation of saying, let's civilize these people. Mm -hmm. They were and uh, you know the churches were like trying to do us a favor. Mm -hmm. They were not really uh, doing something that would uh, make us. You know, they, they they were saying let's civilize the African from their bad ways. Mm -hmm. Now let me show you what a good education can do. It makes people proud. There's a, there's a funny thing in South Africa. You mm -hmm. know South Africa. Mm -hmm one of the countries that uh, Europe and America loves a lot. Mm -hmm. they white people came there, Dutch. Mm -hmm. They were like, they were very few. They were just like uh, probably 20 families mm -hmm. who were running away. They were impoverished, they were poor. Right. They came, enslaved the Africans. Right now, they own almost 70% of the land mm -hmm. and they are 10% of the population. Yep. When they go to South Africa, they rejected speaking uh, that South African language, mm -hmm. so they got Dutch mixed it with uh with, with some African words. So they 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 produce a new language called Afrikaans, mm -hmm. and now these guys own the businesses. Mm -hmm. They own everything. Mm -hmm. When we had COVID, there was a lockdown. Mm -hmm. The black South Africans were housed in uh in stadiums. Mm -hmm. in, can you imagine in Africa? These guys were homeless. The 70% the of the land is owned by 10% of the population, mm -hmm. the white Dutch people. Mm -hmm. They are so racist. Mm -hmm. They are so brutal. But you know why? They, had ne they have never blended in to become Africans. Let me show you another one. Here, close home. Mm -hmm. We have Indians here trading for so many years. Hello. Indians have made billions. Mm -hmm. But when you meet an Indian, he's an Indian. Mm -hmm. He speaks Hindu. Mm -hmm. He worships a Hindu god. Mm -hmm. Everything is Hindu. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is not magical for an Indian to develop. The, for Indian to develop, it's just like, just, it's, it's very easy. Because he, he, he is developing from a point of advantage. Mm -hmm. We, on the other hand, we follow in the, on the footsteps of the white man. Mm -hmm. When the white man brings out uh, iPhone 10, then we start now thinking, how can we manufacture white, uh, iPhone, iPhone 10? By the time we prepare to bring it out, there is 13. Mm -hmm. So we keep just behind. We just, and what we are actually training our kids is how good they speak English. That's mm -hmm. it. That's it. That's it. That's it. If you look at the best education systems in the world, all of them, number one, I think was Japan. Mm -hmm. There was Germany. There was Belgium. There was uh, China. Mm -hmm. There was Russia. All of them teach in their mother tongues. Mm -hmm. The worst are all in Africa. Mm -hmm. All of them. There's, uh, I think there was uh, Mozambique. They were all of them teaching slave languages. Mm -hmm. There was an argument. Someone was asking us, saying, but we have so many languages. Mm -hmm. How can we teach? What language can, can, uh, great can, question. can bring us together? Great yeah. question. And you see, you see this, is, this is a question that is argued by, uh, uh, by Eurocentric people. Mm -hmm. 
uh, the, the, the bourgeoisie, the rich. Myself, I came on this planet when I was a Mnyankwari. Mm-hmm. And I can't apologize for that. Mm-hmm. If government wants to do its policies of development, they, they have to build around who am I? Mm-hmm. I, I don't have to adjust for government to, 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 to develop. Mm-hmm. And you see, why is diversity ba- bad when we talk about Africa? Whoa. You know, diversity, you know, when, Come on now. when you look at African diversity, mm-hmm. it's like a, a story of tourism. Mm-hmm. I think it was you who was talk- I was talking to, was it Joanne or someone? When we were saying that when you go to Zambia mm-hmm. and there's a person here in Uganda, Uganda speak, it's the same language. Yeah. Oh yeah, somebody said that. Yeah. yeah. It's very close. But you see this excuses. Really close. Uganda. You see, inferior people always find a reason to keep behind this master. Uh, you know, Malcolm X talks talked about uh, the house Negro and uh, the field Negro. The field Negro. And when I was when you know uh, there are people who are happy to be sub- subservient mm-hmm. from time immemorial. They love to be subservient. And most of them here were the bourgeoisie, the one who get money, the one who got uh, close to the white people who were in power. Mm-hmm. So they loved to, they, they were so more subservient and they, they loved to be you know, close to white. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but the field Negro rebelled and stayed away. Right, right, right. Now the education that we have has turned us into better slaves. Mm-hmm. And now we are voluntary slaves. We, we don't have to be you know, told, told what to, uh, to do. Yeah. In that book, that Joanne, you were talking about the miseducation of the Negro by Kata G. Woodson. Mm-hmm. He talks about that when you control a man's thinking, you don't have to tell him to go through the back door. He will just find it himself. Mm. He, will just, he will just find it himself. You don't have to tell him that, you know, this is the back door right here. Yeah. So the education we have, we are stuck, by the way. I have to be honest with you. If you look at African Americans, the, 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 the society of the African American, most of the schools were started by the churches mm-hmm. and the Quaker community who were trying to teach people to you know, from slavery. Mm-hmm. But the education was not built on uplifting them from, to be equal to white people. Mm-hmm. It was meant to make them serve white people better. Mm-hmm. So most of them were shoe cleaners, shoe shiners, that's mm-hmm. not, no, no, no yeah, jobs. Right. So you wouldn't come out and say, I want to be a, C- a big CEO. Yeah. It, it, would be, it would be a surprise. That's why we even have a, a derogatory name as a black person called Shine. There you go. Somebody calls somebody a Shine, there it's a shoe shine boy. There you yeah. go. So mm-hmm. you, see, you see this uh, this issue they have in the US right now, the critical race theory. Mm-hmm. It's, it's very funny it's, uh, because the people are saying, let's find out why do we have these uh, income disparities among black mm-hmm. and brown and white people? Why are white people so rich? Mm-hmm. Of course they are poor white people, I know that. But why is the majority of white people are rich and black mm-hmm. people are poor? Mm-hmm. Why is it that African-Americans, black people in America, make 12% of the population, mm-hmm. but they make 48% of the people prison who, who are in, yeah. in prison. Yeah. So these people came up and said, you know what? Let's, let's, let's do a critical study mm-hmm. on the race mm-hmm. and find out maybe this is systemic. Mm-hmm. So the white people like Ron DeSantis uh, said, this is dangerous because these people have benefited from our miseducation. Mm-hmm. Our people who are well-educated mm-hmm. fight against the institution. Mm-hmm. There's no way you can really settle for... If you saw Malcolm X, if you followed him, he was so mad that he found himself so frustrated mm-hmm. that the whole institutions were just... Because he... There's, there's actually a story that came out that Malcolm X was getting to agree with the Ku Klux Klan. Mm-hmm. It was funny, but he did. Because... Mm-hmm. He went both of them be separate from each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, everyone was fighting to... Let's be with the white people. Yeah. And they say, you know what? Let's actually be separate. Yes. But, you know, when they tried to build their own institutions, like the Black Wall Street, mm-hmm. it were broke, they, were, they were broken yeah, down. Broken Why? Down. Because they had stayed subservient. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing here. We are on the same chain, all of us. Mm-hmm. So we don't have anywhere to advance. Mm-hmm. An inferior people, anyone who comes is the boss. When the Chinese come, we, we, we learn Chinese. Mm-hmm. When the Arabs come, we learn uh, Arabs. Yes, very When true. anyone... When the Indians come, well, an Indian. We have, I think, like twenty Indian families here. Yeah, they they are, they own everything here. Mm-hmm. Everything. We speak good English. Mm-hmm. We we we. I mean, we've been close white people. We've done everything, but we are poor, mm. impoverished. Can you can you ask yourself why? Now, the white people argued and they were saying that uh, mis- you know, this is why I have a problem with miseducation because mm-hmm. anything goes. Yes. Whatever they feed you, you take it. Right. There was an argument which I saw on the internet that uh, they were blaming Africans for selling slaves, mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of people were saying, "Why did the chief sell slaves? What choice did they have?" Mm-hmm. But you see, when you learn the story from the one who authored it, mm-hmm. 
That's how it goes. Mm -hmm. There's a book written by a white man. It, it's called uh, The Sins of Our, uh, Our Ancestors. Mm -hmm. He was a white man who was really, he read about slavery and he couldn't believe what he read. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he was writing that book, apparently a lot of white people approached him and told him, please blame it on Africans. Mm -hmm. This book came out around the uh, 70s or 60s. This book, which I was telling you about, it, mm. it's, it's, it's a book that, uh, uh, that this white man, mm -hmm. you know, theorized and, and, and wrote uh, honestly about what happened to, to, to slaves. Mm -hmm. And a lot of white people were begging him and saying, please, mm -hmm. blame this on the Africans. And all African scholars stood up. And every time you talk about slavery, the first person to be blamed is the African chief. Mm -hmm. yeah. The first, a lot of chiefs rebelled against this. A lot of kings. There was uh, the the queen of uh, of uh, of Angola. That that time it was called Matab. I think it was called Matab. Mm -hmm. Queen Nzinga. Mm -hmm. She rebelled against the Portuguese. The Portuguese ganged against her and brought an entire army. Fought this. They, they actually she tried to do diplomacy, and she tried as much as she. And they said, "You have to let us take slaves," and she had resisted. That's not the only one. There was uh, the king of Dahomey. There, there was the Oba of Benin. Mm -hmm. These guys were so many. Mm -hmm. But could you rebel slavery? No. Mm -hmm. You had no choice. Comply or, or they force you. Mm -hmm. So now, but we can't write the books. Mm -hmm. Yes, who writes the books? The whites. The white scholar. The white scholar is the one who writes the books. There was a funny story I saw the other day that uh, the medicine that we have right now, this medicine... When this this was this was actually brought out by uh, is it an Economist or the New York Times, one of the top papers, mm -hmm. the researchers were saying that the medicine we have, when they are manufacturing it, they tailor make it to the DNA of white people, because they are they are the ones they use for trial to see if, if this medicine is going to to work or not work. Mm. So the the rate of performance, the rate of efficiency, in our people, is lower than the, the one that it could have. You know that in, in among the white people, whoa! So because the researchers are not ours, mm. so the whole system mm -hmm. is built against us. Okay. So we are support okay. system to the others. The Chinese, on the other hand, mm -hmm. built a system for their people. It was not easy. Mm -hmm. I tell you what: when you have people who are subservient to you, you don't tell them what to do. I'll show you this: when Russia attacked Ukraine recently, African People, the, the, the celebrities, the one on social media, everyone was blaming Ru Russia. Because, you know why? Because Europe and America were against yeah, Russia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we didn't have any reason to talk about this. We just yes. said, you know what? These white people are saying this. Okay, we are against this. Mm -hmm. See, these people controlled our psychic, mm -hmm. our thinking. Mm -hmm. We can't think for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we have to speak like a white man, eat like a white man, sleep like a white man. Everything do it like a white man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we can't do better because that's his culture. We can't innovate his culture better than him. Mm -hmm. So we stay behind. Right, right, So right, we right. could have, so if we stayed with our cultures, we could have innovated mm. and went to the market with our products. Mm -hmm. Which we, It's funny that myself, I failed agriculture, you know, uh, re, you know looking after animals. Mm. And I couldn't finish this course because it was, uh, I failed it. The teacher said, you failed it. And this is what I grew up do doing. Wow. I knew everything from A to Z. But the language, I would sit in class and the teacher would tell us, from here to here, it's uh, 10 kilometers. Then you need accelerator at this speed. And I didn't know what the teacher was saying. Mm -hmm. I just failed because I didn't know the teacher, what the teacher was saying. Mm -hmm. Now when I read books, I say, oh my, this was madness. Mm -hmm. If I was told this is my language, I would be an astronaut right now. Mm. But imagine what these kids look at. Don't, don't look at the kids in Kampala. The kids in the villages mm. are going through torture. They are being mocked as failures mm. because of a language that is not their language. Mm -hmm. I was interacting with a teacher recently and I asked, I said, what do you think about this? And they just said, funny thing is that when we teach these kids in their own languages, they learn so fast. Mm. And I said, yes, because it's their language. Mm -hmm. So this is a, there's uh, education. Uh, a society is as good as its education. Mm -hmm. Education inspires people and uplifts them and gives them a sense of direction. Mm -hmm. Bad education makes them inferior. Mm -hmm. They have no sense of direction. Mm -hmm. So right now the problem. So now our issues now, we discuss issues which are 
not developmental. Mm. If we want to discuss developmental uh, 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 issues, we look at what does the white researcher say about this. Uh-huh. Even the top economists here in Africa or in the African American community, when they are looking at something, they first look at what is the white researcher. Who say this? Mm-hmm. Is it a white man? Because I was psychic. Because well, most of their PhD theses must be based on the research of somebody else. There you go. There you go. Yeah. So, 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 our mind is white, mm-hmm. but we can't be white. We have to remain. There's an, a, a thing that is going around right now on the news. If you go on, you Google about it. It's about Egypt. Mm-hmm. So there's a movie. I think it's a documentary about uh, Cleopatra, mm-hmm. and she was portrayed as a black woman, and the Egyptian. Oh yeah, and very, the Egyptian yeah. went crazy. Crazy, yeah. Now you know why they went crazy because there's no way you can compare their their history, which is which is the black history. Mm-hmm. You can compare their history to the people who are subservient to them, mm-hmm. the people who don't. I mean. So the Egyptians are looking at say, you can we are we are trying to build our history based on this person, mm-hmm. but you are actually portraying this person, a queen of our queen who's trying to inspire us mm-hmm. as people who are supposed to be gentiles and cleaners in our mm-hmm. places. This is not fair mm-hmm. because we have no sense of direction, mm-hmm. we have no sense of belonging, mm-hmm. and anybody doesn't want to associate with us mm-hmm. when we start discuss the only the topics we discuss. I talk topics that talk about sex, sex topics that talk about things that don't develop. Mm-hmm. And that's where mm-hmm. you are. That's where you stay. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. So Egypt, funny thing. I, I think even Egyptians don't read. The Arabs came recently. Mm-hmm. And when I saw them arguing about this, I, I said, oh my, I think we are all ignorant. Mm-hmm. But the Egyptians and white people use this to their advantage. Mm-hmm. They want to uplift their people, to inspire. Mm-hmm. How do you inspire their people? It's history. You have to tell them that you come from a great generation. Mm-hmm. It's very easy mm-hmm. to advance. Mm-hmm. So they tell uh, they tell Africans, they say, well, look, you were savages, mm-hmm. so we got you from savagery. Mm-hmm. Now here you are. Mm-hmm. Oh, we performed magic. So they tell white people, oh, you know what? You, where you come from? Mm-hmm. You built the pyramids. Uh, you built the, actually they talked about this, uh, this place in Mozambique. It's called, I mean, in, rather in Mozamb- Zimbabwe. It's a big palace. Mm-hmm. It was technologically advanced. So they said white people built it. Was there anybody to say no? Nobody. Mm. The only person who was there to contest against Egypt was a great uh, Czech Antidiop. Mm-hmm. He said no. But these people had a big nose. These people had dark skin. These people had everything. Mm-hmm. These people drew themselves. Look, they drew themselves as black. Mm-hmm. And white scholars almost lynched him. Mm-hmm. Almost killed a man. You know why? Because without Egypt, I mean, Egypt was the first civilization in the whole mm-hmm. universe, in the entire humankind here on, on planet Earth. So if you take Egypt from the equation, then there's nothing. Mm-hmm. So the only thing we are left with, we are African, is the first human being was here in Africa. Mm-hmm. But that, you don't see it in the news anymore. Mm-hmm. No. It, I mean, if it, it gives us a sense of pride. If we become the first human beings, then we are the original mm-hmm. from here in East Africa. Mm-hmm. That cannot be taught in schools. Mm-hmm. The people who are supposed to be subservient are taught skills they are supposed to serve the master. Mm-hmm. So here, what, what happened is that now, we're mm. getting children who speak good English to mm. go to Saudi Arabia mm. to work in toilets. Hmm. That is what subservient people do. You work in the toilets. Mm-hmm. That's your place. It's good speaking English. Uh, and, and it <laughs> it's frustrating when you, when you get to know this. But when you look at it, I, I was in a, 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 a Cote d'Ivoire, that's Ivory Coast. And I saw these people, they actually think they're French. <laughs> And the funny thing It's so true I have a, My buddy was in medical school Was from Ivory Coast Ajib, uh, Abidjan Yes Thought it, Exactly Same thing The question is If you ever met an African And you ask him What's your name He can never tell you His African name Oh yeah They'll tell you It's difficult to mention mm. Mm. It's not that they don't want <coughs> These people feel inferior And they want to get rid of Anything African mm-hmm. Anything Names Cultures, anything, religion, they have not even studied their religion. They have not studied anything Africa. No, how, how did it work for the people? Was it bad? Was it good? I can tell you, the day we'll go back to re-examine African ways, mm-hmm. we'll be astonished. I told you how we just we could make a cow adopt another baby. Mm-hmm. So they share a baby. You know? Mm-hmm. We just, my people did that. They still do that. Wow. So it, we, we have healers. Who would heal someone with a broken leg 
and they are thousands of kilometers away. What? There's a lady here in Gaza. Yeah. But we can't we can't do that. That's actually if you do that right now, they will lynch you. People will lynch you. Witchcraft. Yeah, they will say witchcraft. That's the education. But I saw a white man on TV. Mm. Uh, this uh, women love this watching this TV. It's called entertainment. E entertainment. Yeah. There's this white man called Tyler. Mm -hmm. Oh, the one who can see ghosts. Yeah. Oh. Tyler is making billions of money, mm -hmm. and he's uh, he, he's doing some. He's he's he's, he's talking to, to the dead. The medium. Mm. He's, he's a medium. So Tyler is making millions. Here in Africa, we didn't even have people who would. Tyler would be a baby. In Africa, these people would actually meditate and tell you what's happening in China right now and tell you what's going to happen in a thousand years from now. What? But now if these people came up right now, they would lynch them. And they're still there in the villages. They're there. But the education, because when white people came here, they said, these are all witchcraft and wizardry. But they mm -hmm. were, they, there's no witchcraft like white people's. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm not seeing this. So... It's, it's very it's, it's very interesting yes. that when you hijack a people's of education mm -hmm. and you tell their stories and you train them the way you want them to think, the way you want them to eat, the way you want them to talk, everything you just control them. They, they just it's like remote control. Mm -hmm. If you dance, if uh, white people came here to Africa and found us without clothes, we were just putting in our black clothes and yeah. just, we were probably just covering the private parts and the, you know. And uh, white people said, oh, my God, you people are naked. Mm. This is unbelievable. Oh, so we put on clothes. Now white people are getting naked. And we are falling <laughs> so... No, bitch. We, we are falling so... <laughs> because we, we have no sense of it. We have to follow. If white people woke up next day, tomorrow, and they said, you know what? We just want to... We just feel like eating dirt. We will eat dirt. Mm. I'll tell you that. So this is a society that we have. And this is, if you go to school this year, they are training kids how to be white. Yeah. This is a training, how to be white. But, and when they finish school, they don't, they have, they have no job because they are not scientists. Mm. You cannot be a scientist when you don't understand the language. Mm. And imagine in the modern day, the Europeans are going to space. We are looking at English as a measure of intelligence. Mm. We don't do science. So all we are doing is just speaking English, Chinese, and uh, just being inferior, mm. and just walking around. And this is, it gets better with our ministers, our leaders. All of them here, it was funny, uh, but just a few years ago, if you wanted to rob an African government, you would go to America or India or China, get one Chinese or Indian or American, or a white poor guy. Mm -hmm. You put him in a suit, get a good briefcase, bring him, Take him to the government, uh, Minister of Finance. They will give you billions. They will give you land. And after giving you land, they will give you money for investing. And this is what the Indians did. They would come here, get the land. Government would give them free land. So they would take this land to the bank. So when they take the land to the bank, they will mortgage it. The bank gives them money. Mm. They will run away. So, because the policy makers knows that the people with the light skin cannot cheat. So they blame oh. them. So, but when you a black person come as a she, they would say this one wants to cheat us mm. because the education is taught mm -hmm. to make them mistrust their own. These are enemies. So th this 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 is all, and this is not only here in Africa. Is in the black community in America. Yes, it's uh, in the diaspora in the Caribbean. It's everywhere that you go when you you find black people. You travel a lot, uh, or she. Mm -hmm. I want you to make it uh, like a study. Whenever you go in a, in a country, mm -hmm. and that country has black people, mm -hmm. you look where they stay. They always stay in the most filthy neighborhoods. Yes. All of them. Yes. No exception. Yes. We're always right there in the garbage bin. Yes. I, anyway, I have a lot to say. <laughs> uh, I think I will spend two days here. <laughs> we we would is, want you to stay two days yeah. here. And, and yeah. Well, so we do a part yeah. two. Yeah. We'll put yeah. it on the community tab. I think this was a very powerful yeah. presentation. Very. Yeah. I actually do have a question. Yes. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so how can Africa as a continent preserve its culture and still be able to participate on a on a global standard? I don't know if I'm making sense. You see, uh, yes, thank you very much for yeah. the question. But you see, the global stage is about trade. First of all, what are we trading? Mm-hmm. 
uh, right now we have nothing we are trading. I mean, right now we just we are uh, 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 we are just casual workers mm. for bourgeoisie Europeans. Mm. Uh, so maintaining our culture should be the priority because mm. the African, when we were building our societies, we didn't look at today. We looked at hundreds of years tomorrow, uh -huh. 200 years. So we looked at nurturing kids. It was a priority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at that priority, you inspire the people, mm -hmm. like the Chinese. So it's when you inspire people, it's very easy for them to develop. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to tell them. The ones who grow coffee, they will add in some new, unique things mm -hmm. from their own environment. Mm -hmm. It is very easy. The ones who grow cassava or grow, mm -hmm. you know, yams, mm -hmm. they will add in some special recipes. Mm -hmm. So culture and our our ways and ethics. I'll give you an example. You know, I, I find when white people or Europeans are greeting, it's always, hi, hello. hello. Mm. So it's a, in a capitalistic community of Europeans, it's, a, it's, the, it's just say hello so that I don't ask you for money. We don't want to prolong the com conversation. We don't want to have that attachment. Mm. But when you come to a Muganda lady here mm. oh, in her okay. 60s or 70s, and you say, and you greet, it takes like almost 10 minutes mm. because it has compassion, love, mm. kindness. Mm. And she has that voice that may, soothes your soul. And you know that this is greeting. Mm -hmm. When you see the Africans in my culture, when men were greeting, they would just jump and grab each other and they would just um, embrace and, mm -hmm. yeah. and they would be just, and you feel these people love each other. Mm -hmm. But the European one, hey, what's up, Ben? Hey, 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 how you doing? Yeah, that's, just, <laughs> that's very true. We do it in America so, too. So the, um, the European system is built around individualism. Mm. The individual. But the individual doesn't, is not sustainable. Mm -hmm. You reach a time and you're, you're wiped out. And there's a challenge they're facing. The African community back then was built on a community. I never looked at myself. Mm -hmm. I looked at the family. The family was first. The Europeans is me, myself. Mm -hmm. I have first eight. For mm -hmm. the kids eat. The kids mm -hmm. can die. Uh, that's why you see in the European families, they say, this is a nephew, niece. This is my, my stepbrother. This is my stepsister. Mm -hmm. We don't have that in Africa. This is my brother. Mm -hmm. This is my brother. This is not my stepbrother. Mm -hmm. No. But now, we are moving from ours to, to the European one. But the Europeans, uh, the, the, of course, the, the, the poor people, Europeans are okay. They have come here. They are with us. They are great people. But the people who control power, they don't want us to be with them. Yes. So we stay somewhere. We're not African. We're not white. We're just clowns. Mm -hmm. oh so gosh. we're just clowns in a circus. We just keep we're just moving. Yeah. So so, so uh, to answer you, this is very true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He said some of the same things I've said, but did it much better. Obviously. Yeah. yeah. To be honest, it's yeah. a god ass competition. <laughs> 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 but this was an amazing episode. Do yeah. we end it here and get a part two? Or? Yeah. No. We. I don't. I don't even have anything. He said everything enough today yeah. to save the entire. Black world. We'll say it in that one hour. Yeah. Exactly. So nothing, I don't want to rob of what he has already done. So, yeah. I'll yeah. retire today. Perfect. Uh, Mr. Emperor, tell people where they can find you if they want to reach out to you. Yeah. I am on Twitter, on Elon Musk's Twitter, which <laughs> I, I wish I could get rid of, but I have no choice. <laughs> you know, uh, that man is racist. He made money from racism. His father was, these guys enslaved South Africans. Yeah. And they made billions. And uh, here we are. We have to be on his platform. We have no choice. Yeah. Because we have to follow what uh, white people. We have to follow Zuckerberg. We have to follow uh, the mask. So I'm on Twitter, Sherura Mpora Kachwagure. My handle is African Brother. So you can find me there. And it's always a pleasure interacting with you. Okay. Yeah, we'll put the yeah. on the screen. Yeah. Sure. And your email? My email is um, pogord at gmail.com. That is uh, M for Mike. P for Papa, O for Oscar, okay. uh, G for Golf, uh, L for Lima, D for Delta, at gmail.com. Oh, yeah. we'll put it on the screen so yes, yeah. okay, <laughs> that's okay, where okay, they okay. can find okay, you. Okay, okay. No worries. Um, yeah, Jay, any last? Uh, I'm speechless on anything to say. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. Guys, if you want to reach out to us, you can send us an email at teamkenganda at gmail.com and follow us on all our social media pages at Kenganda Nation. We'll see you guys in part two.